Raiders GM Tom Telesco met with, with the media on Monday. So what did he say? Did he drop any nuggets on what direction the Raiders may be leaning with their first round draft pick on Thursday in the NFL draft? That plus a whole lot more comes up on Tuesday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, April 23rd, 2024. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. And won. And welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen of the day. Make sure you subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast to get the latest edition of the show. As soon as it becomes available, as always, if you're giving us a look on YouTube, we definitely appreciate that. The show continues to grow. That's because of you and Ari. Ari does a great job each and every day getting us up on YouTube, making us look good, make us sound good. And we appreciate him. We shout him out. Check him out on Twitter at Ari Producers. You can hit me up as well at your boy Q254. And, you know, we got the Lockdown Raider podcast voicemail line 707-654-4693. We'll try to get your calls and texts. We will get your calls and texts. We'll try to get as many in as possible in segment number three. A lot of great feedback that we've been receiving uh, over the past few weeks talking all things NFL draft. That'll continue in segment number three of today's show. Segment number two, as I mentioned, GM Tom Telesco spoke with the media on Monday. Uh, got a few sound bites that I want you to hear. I uh, thought he said some good things. Uh, he didn't drop any huge nuggets and lean in one direction or the other, but I think he said a lot without saying a whole lot. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, you hear coming up in segment number two. You hear from the Raiders GM. Tom Telesco here at segment number one news and notes, just whatever I was able to collect over the day as I'm here in Detroit, still waiting for the NFL draft to get started on Thursday. We'll jump right into that after I tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Now off top, what everybody's talking about, and it's not just Raider Nation, it's not just the Lockdown Raiders podcast, it's not just Raider Nation Radio 920, it's not just your boy Q. It is a lot of folks nationally are talking about Jaden Daniels and is he willing to tell the Washington Commanders, yeah, I don't want to play for you. I want to play for them. And it's funny, at one point, it was just conversation about, yeah, maybe he doesn't want to go to Washington because of the way that they did the speed dating situation with all the quarterbacks, didn't like how that played out. Now they're just coming out and talking about the Raiders all the time now. Now it's just like, okay, the one tie, it's not a tie-in with Minnesota. It's not a tie-in with the Giants. It's not a tie-in with the Broncos, who need a quarterback as well. None of the teams that need a quarterback. Now it's just automatically saying, yeah, there's a tie-in right there with the silver and black. So clearly, I say it all the time, where there's smoke, there's fire. I believe there's a little something-something that's brewing with Jaden Daniels and potentially uh, you know, re reuniting with Antonio Pierce, the head coach of the silver and black. If you didn't hear Adam Schefter on Friday, he was on the Pat McAfee show, and he was talking about, you know, where the commanders are leading at the number two uh, overall pick. And he brings up uh, the Raiders as well, but he doesn't say the Raiders' name, but he implies the Raiders by talking about the head coach. So uh, this is what really kind of got the ball rolling. So I played it on Monday's show, but if you missed it, here it is. Adam Schefter on Friday, the Pat McAfee show, talking about who he believes the commanders will take at number two. It's tracking towards Jaden Daniels, which it has been. Okay. The signs point to Jaden Daniels, which they do. Okay. And the commanders are going through it after this week when, again, I think it's a situation where, from the outset, Jaden Daniels has had, his, had an interest in being other places. Oh, mm. He just has. That's now the, the interest is, okay, what do the commanders do about that? Do they – like, there have been plenty of players who have wanted to play elsewhere – and the teams don't care, and they just do what they do. Or if there's a team that wants him, i.e. a team that used to essentially have a coach that worked him in college, like mm. they, then they have to trade for him. So what, what do they want to do? So there you go. There's Adam Schefter. Really got the ball rolling for me on Friday when I was filling in on uh, Carlin versus Joe on ESPN Radio. And once that sound hit, man, it was like wildfire. That took off. Talked about it all day on Friday. Talked about it over the weekend with family and friends. Uh, talked about it on the podcast on Monday. So, of course, that conversation continues as it is the draft week. So, you know, that's going to be one of the biggest storylines. Nobody's talking about Caleb Williams. Everyone believes that's a done deal to the Chicago Bears, and everything starts at number two with the Washington Commanders. So, Dan Graziano was a guest, and he's the NFL insider for ESPN. He was a guest on Unsportsmanlike, their morning show with Evan Cohen, Chris Canty, and Michelle Smallman. They do a really good job. Uh, they were asking him about Jaden Daniels, and is there a chance 
that Jaden can give the Washington Commanders the Heisman and say, yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to play for you. Here's Dan Graziano's answer. Check it out. Is Jaden Daniels going to dictate where he's going to go? No, I do not believe that that is the case. I, I think he'll go. If, if Washington selects him at two, I think he'll be happy to be number two and go there. I do think there's a relationship between Jaden Daniels and Antonio Pierce, the head coach of the Raiders. Uh, Antonio Pierce was on the Arizona State coaching staff under Herm Edwards when Jaden Daniels started his college career there. Uh, and they like each other a lot. I think they would both love for that to work out, but I also think they're both realistic. I, the Raiders don't have the ability to get up high enough to take him, uh, most likely. If the, if the commanders were to take somebody else at two, the, I believe the Patriots would get a call from the Raiders. The question is, could they, make, could they offer enough? And I guess that's the question. Have the commanders, Adam Peters, their general manager, settled on the quarterback they, they're going to take on Thursday night? I think... <laughs> I, I think they're probably pretty close, if not settled. This this is right around the time, like the beginning part of the week, when teams really get their boards set. And obviously, in the case of Washington and their first round pick, you don't have to do too much setting. Like you know, you know who your choices are. It's everybody but Caleb Williams. So I think it, it, you know they're at the they're at the point now where like the most likely thing is that they probably have one more meeting today or tomorrow where they kind of go around the room and say, everybody okay with this? You know, speak now or forever hold your peace, kind of thing, uh, and then they, and then they probably go ahead and and uh, and take him. So whoever that is, whether it's Daniels, May, McCarthy, you know, I, if I had to guess, I'd guess Daniels. But you know, I, I think they're they're pretty close, if not settled. Just a hypothetical, Dan. If this were to intensify, Jaden Daniels not wanting to go to Washington, if he were to make that known, even if they had him graded higher, do you think Washington would still take him, or would that derail them from going that way? Uh, I think it, it could, especially if you think it's close between him and somebody else, I would think it could break the tie for you. But I, again, I don't get the sense that that's what's going on. So there you go. You hear Evan Cohen ask the question. Dan says no. You hear Chris Canty follow up and then Michelle Smallman as well. And there's still a little bit of wiggle room. As much as he said no as quickly as possible, it seems like there's still potentially a little bit of wiggle room of what Jaden Daniels could do. And look, I'm not saying Jaden Daniels is that guy that would even want to ruffle feathers like that. A lot of guys wouldn't. A lot of guys wouldn't want to be known as the one that told a team that is about to give them millions on top of millions of generational dollars, right? That, yeah, I don't want to play for you guys. Uh, I'd rather play for them, right? I mean, that's that's a tough pill to swallow. and That's a tough ask of any young man to do. But, you know, again, going back 20 years, we saw Eli Man Manning do it. We've heard of other players that have suggested that they don't want to play with certain teams and it would be better if you didn't draft me and let that team, they haven't done it as openly as Eli Manning has or did, but you can see other teams and other players uh, kind of, you know, pushing that envelope of trying to, trying to dictate where they go. And again, it's all in my opinion, uh, up to the Raiders to get up to the number three spot. If they get up to the number three spot, they have a shot. If they don't, well, then obviously that's not going to happen. Got a couple more little news and notes that I want to give you here in segment number one. And one of them is Zach Wilson. To the Denver Broncos. He was traded on Monday from the Jets to the Broncos. We all knew that he was on the trade block. Didn't know when it was going to happen. It didn't know what team he was going to get traded to. But first I saw a tweet from Ian Rappaport saying former Jets starting quarterback at number two, uh, Zach Wilson, is on the move. Sources say he's being traded to the Broncos, hoping for a fresh start. The deal includes a late round pick swap, sixth or seventh, and the and the Jets will pay some of Wilson's roughly five point five million salary cap. Then uh, our salary uh, for twenty twenty four. Then uh, Adam Schefter doubled down and said the compensation update on Zach Wilson trade. The Jets and Broncos are splitting the five and a half million that is due this season. Jets are paying two point seven five, and the Broncos are paying two point seven five. So Zach Wilson now is a member of the Denver Broncos in their quarterback room. They have Zach Wilson, Jared Stidham, and Ben DiNucci. Is that going to stop them from adding a quarterback on Thursday? No, I don't think so. I still believe that they'll draft a quarterback number 12 overall, but uh, there you go. Uh, if you're wondering where Zach Wilson was going to end up, he ends up with the Denver Broncos. I actually had a couple people hit me up and say, well, the Raiders couldn't have done that, and I've said it before, I don't think that the Raiders are in the business to try to get a project. They have Aiden O'Connell, but they're still trying to build him up. They have Gardner Minshew, got him on a two-year deal. Don't think that they want to grab a guy that they look at as a project as well. If they get a guy, get a quarterback, I believe they want a quarterback that is the guy that they believe could be their franchise dude for a really long time. So Zach Wilson now in the AFC West with the Denver Broncos. And speaking of the AFC West, as we close out segment number one, the Chiefs, they have uh, they have re-upped, they have extended 
their big three. What do I mean by that? Well, their chairman and CEO Clark Hunt announced on Monday that the team agreed to contract extensions with President Mark Donovan, General Manager Brett Veach, and Head Coach Andy Reid. The agreements ensure the leadership team of this uh, of the Chiefs will remain in place for the long term future. And uh, earlier, Chiefs Chairman and CEO Clark Hunt told. Uh, Andy Reid, he wanted to make him the NFL's highest paid coach, and now he is on a deal that runs through 2029. GM Brett Veach also is under contract through the end of the decade as Kansas City launches its quest for a three-peat. That was from Tom Pelissero from the NFL Network. So for anyone who thought that Andy Reid was going to go somewhere and retire if they won the Super Bowl, uh, no, he's still uh, he's doing well. He's uh, enjoying what he's doing. He's got a really good team led by a really great quarterback, and now he's extended. His contract is extended through 2029. So uh, to slay the Giants, you're going to have to slay the Giant. There's no dipping out because all of a sudden the coach decides to retire and they start to fall apart at the seams. But uh, the Chiefs extend their three guys, mainly Andy Reid, uh, under contract through 2029. That's what I got for you. Segment number one of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Coming up in segment number two, got some breakdowns from Tom Telesco, his media uh, session that he had, his little press conference that he had on Monday at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. You'll hear some key breakdowns from that coming up next in today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, which is Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball. It makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. They've got great last-minute deals, all in their prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets, which is awesome, right? If you decide that maybe some friends come to town and they want to go see a game real quick, and you didn't have tickets or didn't have plans to go, say, you know what, let me just go ahead and pop up the Game Time app and see if I can get some last-minute tickets. And they have them. They even have t- tickets that are getting cheaper the closer and closer it gets to the first pitch of the game. You can save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and a whole lot more. They've got the zone deal, so you can save even more when you choose a section and let Game Time choose the seats. They have the views from your seat. I think that that's a, a great advantage. You can actually see where you're going to be sitting before you buy the tickets and your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticket industry. Right now, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, use the promo code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N NFL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Raiders GM Tom Telesco doesn't talk with the media much, but any time is right before the draft. He's got to talk. He'll talk after the draft as well, kind of a conclusion, uh, you know, just kind of talk about the players that they got, what they saw in them, why they drafted them. They'll have a follow-up. It's always uh, good to hear from him. But he talked to the media on Monday. I'm here in Detroit uh, waiting for the NFL draft, and hopefully the player that, the Raiders select in the first round is actually here in Detroit, and I get an opportunity to catch up with them, but that's a story for another day. Uh, Tom Telesco, he met with the media on Monday. There's a few sound bites. It was probably about a 20-minute uh, press conference. I got a few sound bites that I want to bring to you uh, here on today's show. Here is segment number two of the Locked On Raiders podcast. And off top, it's just about Tom T. and Antonio Pierce and what it's been like working together, especially with what's it been like with working with him, Antonio Pierce, throughout the course of this process. Yeah, it's, it's been really good. Um, he's got a great vision of what he wants in the football team, and he hasn't deviated from that, uh, which really helps the personnel department as far as we're trying to match up players to our football team. Um, he's got a great feel for evaluating players, which I'm not surprised. He played at a high level. He's coached at high school level, college level, the pro level. Um, evaluating players is all the same, whether they're 15 years old or they're 25 years old. Um, but he's got a really good feel for that. Um, what's been nice since he was in college recently, he knows some of these players already. He may have recruited them, may have known about them, may have played against them when he was coaching in college. So that's been helpful. Um, but I think the biggest thing is he has a real vision of what he wants and he hasn't, you know, gone like this with that. So it really helps us kind of identify, um, exactly who's going to fit as a Raider. So I've said it before. I'll say it again. I think Tom Telesco and Antonio Pierce are a really good balance. One is totally outgoing. The other one, uh, you know, is kind of reserved. Like Tom Telesco doesn't talk a lot. AP does, right? AP is very loud. And as a matter of fact, about what he wants, Tom Telesco talks more in GM uh, speak, right? Front office speak, where he's not going to give you a whole lot, but he's still going to say what he's got to say. But he's not a dude who just decides he wants to do a whole lot of media. But AP, he is good with that. So speaking to AP, he's also been the guy that's been very as a matter of fact, about who he wants in the locker room. I mean, he came out and said it at the Combine that, you know, I'm the gatekeeper of the locker room. 
right? Everyone doesn't get in that locker room. Everyone doesn't uh, fit in that locker room. Everyone can't get in there because I don't want to mess up the culture that we're creating. So here's Tom Telesco talking about Antonio Pierce being that gatekeeper to the locker room. And if that comes into play, even when they're trying to draft players and go through the evaluations of these players. Yeah, even how, how they're going to fit in our city. I mean, these, these players are coming in and representing the Raiders, representing Las Vegas, and they're representing fans of the Raiders all over the world. So, um, yeah, that does come into it. And we are very protective of that. Um, if you're going to be a part of us, you got to fit us. And uh, I think AP is just tremendous at that. So, you know, we say it all the time that the players are always kind of an image of their head coach. Well, they're literally building this team to be in the image of their head coach, Antonio Pierce. And they're being very selective with the guys that they put into that locker room. So when I go back and I say that I think Terry on Arnold is a serious a person to be selected at number 13, the cornerback out of Alabama. I say that for multiple reasons, including the relationship that I see between AP and Terry on Arnold, both at the combine at his pro day, right? Just kind of seeing how they got along. That's part of the reason for that. Like he's looking for guys that he has a good rapport with guys that he can, you know, push the right buttons on and get the most out of them. You know, guys that, as he told me, I want guys that have a little bit of AP in them a little bit of edge to him, a little bit of, you know, chip on their shoulder to him. Like that's, that's the kind of guys he's looking for. Can everybody be that guy? No, but he's looking for the right blend of that. So they're being very selective with who they even consider as a potential draft picks, just like they did in free agency. You see, they didn't go crazy in free agency. Uh, to my surprise, I thought they were going to select a lot more players, uh, you know, sign a lot more players in free agency. They didn't. They were very careful with what they did. Uh, Christian Wilk, Obviously, that was a big monster. Gardner Minshew, uh, the more and more you start to hear from him and see from him, you're starting to see how he fits into the locker room. Uh, you know, Alexander Madison, uh, and then basically their guys. And that was pretty much it. Again, very selective with the players that they're looking at, very selective with the players that they're bringing in to the organization. So uh, here's a question that I believe Vinny Bonsignor asked about if he's been in talks with other teams that may be open for business now that the Patriots, Elliot Wolf, another guy that I've talked about quite a bit here on the show, let it be known that, hey, the Patriots are open for business. So does that mean that Tom Telesco has actually reached out and talked to either the Patriots or other teams that could be open for business because they said they were? News flash: GM says he's open to trading up, moving back, picking a spot. Like everybody always says the same thing. So, um, yeah, like we have a plan right now um, to go up if we have to and be aggressive with it. We've got a plan if we stick and pick, obviously. And we got a plan to go back if it's within a certain range. Um, it's been normal this year as like other years, like, there's been conversations with other teams, but it's probably more general than specific. Um, it really wouldn't get more specific to usually like later in the process, Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday, um, even sometimes when you're on the clock. So, um, But it's been about the same amount of work that goes into that. So I like how Tom Zalesko started that response. Oh, uh, yeah, newsflash, newsflash. The GM says they're open for business or, you know, everyone says the same thing. But he also did say they have a plan in place to be aggressive if the, you know, the, the opportunity presents itself. Uh, and obviously, I'm looking at the Patriots and thinking that opportunity is there. Uh, if they have a plan in place, uh, I'm sure they do. They've already you know, started to uh, talk to all these different teams and start to get a plan in place just in case they can make that move. But they've probably got a few you know, dots that they need to, or eyes that they need to dot and a couple T's that they need to cross before they actually do that. But that, I mean, that's the spot I'm looking for. That's the sweet spot. Team, uh, The team that's sitting there at the number three hole, the New England Patriots, that the Raiders could get to that spot. Again, it could be a whole lot of nothing. But I do feel like there's a little something, something that is there. Just got a couple more sound bites. I wanted you to hear from Tom Zalesko as he met with the media on Monday at the Intermountain Health Performance Center. And this one's talking about the ad of the long, long question that we always ask. Is it best player available, BPA, or is it position a need? What is the philosophy that Tom Zalesko believes in? Yeah, I mean, that's always that's the question every year. You try and balance it out. But the biggest thing is your needs change and, and they're unpredictable. And a need we may have today may not be a need in August. We may have a player in the building right now that continues to develop and grow and fills that need. Uh, we may have a position group that feels really strong today. And then we get to September, October, and it's not that strong. So um, the story I've told here is, um, I guess it would be my first year um, with the Chargers. Our roster needed a lot of work, but I felt like our receiver group was the strongest group on the, on the football team. So we're in the draft, we're in the third round, and Keenan Allen's card is just staring at us, just begging us to take him. And we decide, all right, we'll take him, but more than likely he'll probably redshirt the year. We don't really have a spot for him. He may even be inactive every week. Um, and then we get into May OTAs, and 
one receiver gets hurt, uh, we get in training camp, another receiver really didn't perform the way we thought he would, and then in September another receiver got hurt. Keenan jumps in the game in September, and he's rookie of the year that year. Um, so, like I said, your, ch- your, your needs change um, quickly and unpredictably. So it's hard to go into a draft just thinking how we're going to line up this opening day. We have to take a little bit more, more a long-range approach to it, like I was telling Hondo, um, and that look, you know, four or five years down the road rather than just how they fit today. Pretty good uh, answer right there. Nice length to that answer, and especially with the story of Keenan Allen and how that wasn't a position to need at all. That wasn't the guy that they were looking at even adding, but they did it because, well, he just he was there, he was available, they got him, and they ended up it ended up being a position of need, right? So he said that he doesn't really uh, kind of believe in that philosophy because your need on draft day may completely change, right? You might not need that same player later on because someone else has stepped up, or all of a sudden you may need a position that you passed over because a guy gets injured or, or guys just aren't performing at the level that they need be, and that's what happened with Keenan Allen. Injuries and guys not stepping up like they're supposed to do got Keenan Allen on the field, and the rest is history. Right. He became the rookie of the year. So, again, when we talk about, well, this position is pretty uh, stacked already. They don't really need that guy. Like I talk about Byron Murphy, that'd be a luxury. Some say that a corner at 13 would be a luxury because they don't really need that. Well, you never know what you actually need. And that's the story right there that Tom Telesco just told about Keenan Allen. Uh, This is a really good question I thought was asked and a good answer uh, from Tom Telesco. Kind of stopped him at uh, stumped him uh, originally, but he was asked what he'd like to see accomplished. By the end of the draft, here he is, Tom Celesco, talking about accomplishments that he'd like to see by the end of the draft. Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, that's hard to answer because um, after the draft, when, when whoever many guys we select, you feel great about all of them. Um, in reality, they're not all going to hit. We kind of know that. Um, you don't want to really, um, you don't want to talk about it. But yeah, that's just reality. Um, but I guess probably. Because we're all kind of new together here, just make sure this process goes smoothly. Um, we're going to do some things tomorrow, as the NFL has like a mock draft to make sure everything works techno- uh, with technology and everything like that. So we'll go through our own tomorrow. Just make sure the process is uh, smooth. Because um, when you're when you're making decisions and there's a clock behind you ticking down, you don't have time at that point to be explaining things. So we'll kind of do a walk through tomorrow because everybody's new um, here working together, and we'll kind of go through that. So just make sure the process works smoothly. That's probably the biggest thing, but I'm not really worried about it, to be honest with you. So there you go. Another, like I said, pretty good answer right there. Nice length to that one, nice details, and uh, something that Tom Telesco had to think about quite a bit. So I, I thought that that was a really good answer from Tommy T. And the final soundbite I want you to hear here in segment number two of today's Lockdown Raiders podcast, then we'll get into your calls and texts coming up in segment number three. It's not about this class coming up that they're going to start on Thursday, but the 2023 class. How big a year is this going to be for them, guys like Tyree Wilson, guys like Ja'Cory and Bennett, you know, other guys, Byron Young. Uh, how big is this going to be, uh, especially for them to come in and uh, make an impact on this Raiders team? Well, this will be a big step for them. Um, always the second year, a full offseason program. Um, they don't have to worry about, you know, training for the combine, getting ready for the draft, making visits. Um, so players like, like like Tyree Wilson, I know he missed a lot of time in the draft process, and then I think even in OTAs with with a foot injury. So for a player like him to have a full, real off season is going to be really beneficial. Um, then at the corner, same way. I mean, a lot of these kids as they grow, like you know, last year when they were drafted, they're not weren't just drafted for their rookie year. So um, you know, we expect and hope to see big strides from that whole class. I think they all made the team last year, which is pretty darn good. I think it was ten players that were drafted, ten players made the team. A lot of them had some had bigger roles than others, but they all had a role. So yeah, we'll be counting on those guys. So there you go. You hear Tommy T talk about Tyree, talk about uh, you know, Jacory and Bennett and, and and others, right? I mean, now they have an opportunity, right? When you get drafted in the first year, you never really expect to see a guy just go out there and have a huge impact. Some guys do, obviously. Uh, we talk about it each and every year, uh, especially at the quarterback position. Uh, they either have an impact or they don't. But, uh, yeah, this is when they need to take that next step, that big step from year one to year two. And that includes Aiden O'Connell, too, right? Remember, he was a rookie last year. He just got a lot more play than a lot of rookies did. And so, uh, you know, kind of almost feels like he's not a rookie, but he is. So maybe he's going to take that big step from year one to year two as well. But what says you? What's on your mind? Your calls and texts are coming up next, 707-654-4693. It's the Locked On Raiders podcast. Before we get to that, though, I do want to tell you about a couple of great sponsors here on the Lockdown Raiders podcast, including BetterHelp. Sometimes 
We all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. And it's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. So there's anything, there's a lot of different things that you can be looking to get off your chest. It could be something work related. It could be something relationship related. It could be something that's, you know, not even someone that you know. It could be something that you observe uh, each and every day that you maybe it doesn't feel right or it doesn't sit right with you. And you just, you know, you want to speak to someone, but maybe you don't know who to speak to. Sometimes that's the biggest problem. You know that you want to talk to someone. You just don't know exactly who. You don't know if you should talk to you know, your friend, your loved one, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever the case may be. Or sometimes you need to think about talking to someone that is very unbiased. That's where therapy could come into play. Therapy could be different for everyone. And a lot of us have big time problems that we talk about. And sometimes we have big time problems that we don't talk about. But it's really good to get it off your chest and again, talk to someone. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. All you got to do is check out betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. There's no problem that's too big and no problem that's too small for better help. Again, betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. I also want to tell you about FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. And if you're a Laker fan, you're not feeling good. You're down 0-2. If you're a 76ers fan, you're not feeling good. You're down 0-2. And both games that were lost on Monday night were pretty much heartbreakers. They were not the way that you wanted them to go. But if you're a Vegas Golden Knight fan, you're feeling really good. You won your playoff game against the Dallas Stars. So uh, there's a lot going on right now and a lot that you can dibble and dabble in with FanDuel. New customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. $150 win or lose. You bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. It's all an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, it's America's number one. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and text draft that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. First off, let's get a call from EP. It's a quick one. He's calling out of Seattle, Washington. Got a quick call about quarterback Jaden Daniels. Here he is, EP from Seattle, Washington. Hey, Q. EP calling from Seattle, Washington. Uh, curious what you think if they go all the way up and somehow get our boy at QB up at the top. Um you think he's a he's a day one starter, or would they try to do something, you know, just Mahomes esque with with sitting him for a year and developing him and you know building building up whatever? Um, yeah, just curious your thoughts there. And if that's the case, I wonder if that makes us less likely to keep three quarterbacks this year. Um, I don't know. Interesting stuff. Appreciate what you do, man. Have a good one. EP. Thanks for the call, my man. And no, I don't think Daniel starts day one. Regardless, I don't think he starts day one. Really, whatever team he plays for, but especially the silver and black. Um, I think he would start sometime this season. Uh, Antonio Pierce has talked about Eli Manning before, how he, you know, obviously was drafted uh, by the Chargers, traded to the Giants, and he didn't start right away. But at some point, when they feel comfortable with him, they'll put him in. But that's why the addition of Minshew is so big. Minshew O'Connell allow the Raiders to be patient with whoever they bring in, Jane Daniels or others. So, uh, yeah, in my opinion, uh, no starting day one. But yes, the starting in 2024. So thanks so much for the call. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a text from Ant Dog in the ATL. This is AQ. It's Ant Dog from the ATL. First time texting the show. Everyone's focused on the top of the draft, and rightfully so. I want to talk about a deep uh, in the draft running back, Frank Gore Jr. out of Southern Mississippi. Great NFL bloodline, similar traits to his dad. Good developmental back that can contribute on special teams, especially with the rule changes. What are your thoughts? Love the show. My morning isn't complete without listening to the Locked On Raiders podcast. Raiders. That's Ant Dog in the ATL. Thanks so much for the text. I appreciate you. And yeah, I mean, Frank Gore Jr. is a guy that they can get after it, right? Similar to his pops, he's an absolute dog, right? I mean, he doesn't have the highest accolades like his dad did, but uh, yeah, he could play. And the thing about it is there's a handful of running backs that, that I believe could be really special in the National Football League that are probably going to get drafted much later in the in the draft, which is fine, right? You get a guy like Frank Gore Jr. Uh, much later in the draft, and, and you got, like you said, a healthy bloodline. Uh, you've got a guy that's been there, done that, as far as knowing what it looks like to stick around the league, you know, knows what it looks like to be a professional because he watched his pops do it. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that uh, he would be a, a really special player 
Um, you know, there's there's other guys as well. Um, I, I like uh, my man out of, uh, of course, I always forget his name when I start to think about him. Uh, my man, uh, um, man, what's his name? Out of Michigan, uh, Corum, Blake Corum. Jeez, he is really a good player. I like him a lot. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd from uh, South Carolina or from USC, but by way of South Carolina, I like him a lot as well. Uh, there's a handful of backs, man, that I think could be special, but Frank Gore Jr. is definitely one of them. So uh, thanks so much for that text. I do appreciate you. And special teams, getting on the field, special teams, uh, they we should see some differences, I think, in, in how the special teams looks because of the rule changes, as you mentioned. So thanks again for the text. I appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Raider Clay. He's calling to talk about the draft and has questions about, about trading up for someone not named Jane Daniels. Here he is, Raider Clay. Q, it's Raider Clay. It's been a while since I've uh, called into the show. Um, and gave uh, my two cents, not that my two cents matter that much. <laughs> Just wanted to call and talk about the draft coming up this week. Um, I listened to Monday's show, and uh, you were talking about kind of what the priorities are as far as what the Raiders should do um, in the first round. Obviously, you said Jaden Daniels is the priority. He is uh, choice 1A. Do what you can to draft up. If you can't, we said that taking the best corner on the board at pick number 13 would be the next best option, whether it's uh, Arnold or Mitchell. Um, what do you think about the possibility of the Raiders expanding draft capital to trade up to get a guy like Michael Penix Jr.? Do you think it's worth it to, like I said, expend any kind of draft capital to go up for him? Because uh, what if, you know, four quarterbacks are taken in the top ten and uh, Penix is still available, but there's a team like the Minnesota Vikings that are wanting to trade up, and we know that they're looking for a quarterback as well. We think it would be worth it for the Raiders to use some draft capital to trade up from 13 to get a guy like Penix Jr. Um, do you think that would be worth it more than maybe staying pat at 13 and taking a corner or a tackle? Um, just my thoughts, my question, I think it would be worth it, to go get a guy like Penix and use draft capital to trade up, because you know, what if he's not available at thirteen, or what if you, what if the Raiders are thinking that he's not going to be available at thirteen, but they're still wanting to get their quarterback in round one? Uh, anyways, what do you think, Raider Clay? Out, Raider Clay. Thanks so much for the call. Appreciate you, my man. And for my money, no, it's not worth it. Right? I, I really truly believe that Penix will be available at thirteen. Really, I think he's going to be available beyond thirteen. Uh, the biggest question for him is how far past 13 will he be available and is it worth the roll of the dice to say okay we'll try to get him in round two we'll try to get him at the back end of round one what is the case may be or do the Raiders have to go and get him in 13 if they do in fact really like him like that I mean that's that's a question that Tom Telesco and AP have to come up with the answer with again they could just roll the dice to say hey we'll grab him a little bit later on in round one we'll try to trade back or roll the dice and say he probably make it to round two and again Will Levis was talked about even up to the day of the draft where you know the the lines were moving and shifting to the point where it looked like he was going to be the number one overall pick, he ended up going in the second round. So I mean, just because everyone's saying that that these guys are going to go in the first round and there's going to be such a run on quarterbacks, you better get them while you can. Doesn't necessarily mean that that's the truth. There's a very good chance that a guy could be around for a long time. Remember Malik, uh, Malik Willis. Man, Tennessee's getting all these guys that were supposed to be high picks. Remember Malik Willis at one time was talking about being a first round pick. Yeah, the Tennessee Titans ended up getting him, too. When? Third round? Fourth round? It was much later than the first round. I know that for sure. And he wasn't worth the salt. Uh, that's why they went and dipped their toes back into the quarterback room and go out there and get Will Levis like they did last year. So, uh, yeah, just because they always say that these guys are going to go at a certain time doesn't mean they will. But thanks so much for that call. Definitely appreciate you. It's good to hear from you. Up next, got a text from Raider Art in the 209. It says, what's up, Q? Longtime listener, Raider Art in the 209. The last 20 years, our Raider drafts have been awful. In reality, we were an average or below average team with bad free agent contracts, bad drafting by reaching for red flag prospects. Telesco needs to stay true to his draft board, plus sign rookie free agents to fill out the rest of the roster. AP will challenge all positions to step up or lose your job. He doesn't care or draft. Uh, he doesn't care of the draft or pay status. It's about results on the field. Raider style and attitude is in our core value as a player, as a coach, as a fan. AP will hold everyone responsible. AP is the guardian of the Raiders. Expectations are high every year. Question Q, what NFL prospects do you think best fits this Raiders roster going forward? That's Raider Art in 209. And, man, that's that's tough because there's a lot of dudes uh, out there that that have that mentality that AP is looking for. I picked one of them. 
one of the reasons I picked Terry on Arnold at uh, number 13 overall. He definitely has that attitude. He's got that dog mentality. But you know what? His uh, his position mate, you know, Quinion Mitchell uh, from Toledo, he's got that dog in him as well. He's got the production as far as interceptions. Uh, he could be that dude. So, uh, yeah, I mean, both of those guys for sure. Byron Murphy, I've talked about him. And I'm just talking about early round picks. There's a lot of later round dudes that can have that as well. Um, I think that a guy like uh, Fuaga, the offensive lineman, uh, has got a little nasty to him. I think he's got uh, some AP in him, some you know, some some guys that embody what it's like to be a Raider. I mean, he's he's one of those dudes that just about screams being a Raider, right? I mean, there, you can look at him. Um, man, there's I think there's a there's a lot of dudes that can get after it and be real true Raiders that the team and AP is looking for from all kind of different positions, uh, safeties, edge rushers, defensive tackles, corners, linebackers, offensive linemen, obviously the quarterback position. I mean, you think about, you know, Jaden Daniels, he could be that dude. Michael Penix with the ability to stretch the field, he could be that dude. I mean, there's a there's a lot to like about a lot of these guys, and a lot of them have the mentalities that AP is looking for. So thanks so much for that text. I do appreciate you. Up next, got a call from Jordan in Oregon. He's calling to give his final thoughts on the draft and what he thinks is going to happen uh, starting on Thursday. Here he is, Jordan in Oregon. Hey, what's going on, Q? Jordan in Oregon. Hey, I wanted to chime in on your podcast and listening to your radio show as well. Good questions, uh, especially in regards to, you know, maybe not wanting to give up a player if the Raiders were able to try to move up in this draft. And, uh, hey, my take, just my final take that I've just been thinking a lot about lately is with the word of uh, the Patriots open to, to trade in that third selection, I think they've pretty well figured out that that uh, their, their odds at getting the quarterback they want must not be there. They must not be as into, like, Drake May and McCarthy because uh, it's looking like it's pretty well confirmed that, and maybe I'm wrong on this and changes quite often, but that uh, the commanders are going to be taking Jaden Daniels. It's just all everything I've been seeing, it, it'd be kind of a no-brainer as well if you really think about it. I mean, it's easy to read into things, but also just from a standpoint of a franchise that really could use, you know, Heisman tro- Trophy face, you know, face of their franchise and Daniels would be exactly that and so with that being said I think that if if there's a a way to move up and they can get that third pick I think they go after Drake May and uh, my reason behind that is if you look at just you know Telesco and and kind of where he was able to get Herbert in the draft and uh, the similarities between those quarterbacks and I know Telesco uh, obviously has gets a lot of credit for drafting Herbert, and I think that this would kind of go go along the lines of that same sort of big build, uh, strong arm dude that can kind of hang in the pocket and just a big stud. But anyway, that's my take, and uh, just wanted to hear your thoughts on that. Peace out, bro. Jordan, thanks for the call, my man, and you're okay with trading up to get Drake May, and maybe the Raiders are too. Um, they, they could be in love with two different quarterbacks. I personally don't think that they are. I think it's Jaden Daniels or bust, but that's just my personal feeling. And kind of going back to the last text that we got, you know, I feel like that Jaden Daniels fits in with what a Raider is more than Drake may as well. Right. That's the, that's the other thing about it is that it just seems like what they may be looking for in a Raider, in a quarterback, in the leader of that, that room is more of a Jaden Daniels than of Drake may. But again, that's just me. I know there's a lot of people that are very high on Drake may and you could all be very right. And I could be very, very wrong, but we'll see. Right. We'll see what direction the Raiders decide to go in and uh, the players that they bring in. But, uh, hey, you, you like Drake May, you're willing to, to you know, uh, go up to the number three spot and get him if he's available. Uh, obviously, Jaden Daniels is QB one. But if uh, if, in fact, the Washington Commanders do what everyone believes they're going to do and select him, then you're good with Drake May. And that's OK. Thanks so much for that. Uh, that call. Maybe those uh, those Justin Herbert traits that, that you talked about. Maybe Tom Telesco does see those and he decides, you know what, Drake May is my guy. So thanks again, like I said, for that call. We'll get it closed out with one more text, and this one's a lengthy one from Moose in the A43. Hey, Q, it's Moose in the A43. Been listening to your show for four years now. You're my go-to for all things Raiders. I appreciate your all all that you do for the Raider Nation each and every day. I'd love for you to give a shout-out to my sons, uh, my two sons who have recent birthdays. Grant turned 13 a few weeks ago, and Benjamin turned 16 in two weeks. We love to listen to your show together to stay up on the latest news and notes. It's been a fan. I've been a fan since the eighties back in the days of Bo. I'm also an LSU alum. Like many of us, I'd like to share my hopes that we draft Jaden Daniels. 
I've watched Jaden not just perform individually at LSU in his two years at quarterback there, but be a huge part in this program's turnaround after two years. Jaden, as we all know, has amazing physical and mental talent as a quarterback, but his leadership ability helped elevate the rest of his team, bringing a positive attitude, tireless work ethic, and had the ability to take the game on his shoulders, which is what you need in quarterback in the AFC to make a deep run in the playoffs every year. I've seen him turn around LSU's offense. I believe he could do the same for the Raiders. We can't get him. I'm in agreement with you to get a stud cornerback. Then do our best to get Penix late in the first round. No matter what, I trust our leadership for the first time in a long time. Go bring back our winning ways. Go Raiders. And that is, again, from Moose in the A43, a big uh, proud alum of LSU. Great breakdown, man. I don't really have a whole lot to say. Great breakdown on Jaden Daniels. Uh, I agree with you. Uh, everything that you said is what I've heard or, or seen. And uh, I think that he would be that guy, that difference maker quarterback for the silver and black and also put them in a really good position where they're competing with some of the best quarterbacks in the AFC game in and game out. Moose, thanks so much for that text. Uh, shout out to your sons. That's awesome. Uh, Grant, who turned 13 a few weeks ago and 16. Um, Benjamin turned 16 in two weeks coming up. So Grant and Benjamin, thanks so much for listening as well with your pop Moose. And how cool is that when you got a, a pops named Moose <laughs> calling out the eight? Four, three. That's going to do it for today's show. Of course, we'll have more of that coming up tomorrow. Billy Raider in Maryland by way of Rochester, New York. We got you and a whole lot more of texts and calls as we close things out in segment number three. We'll have news and notes of the day and a lot more conversations. We get a little bit closer and a little bit closer and a little bit closer to the start of the NFL draft coming up on Thursday from where I'm at, Detroit. So until then, Raider Nation, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly, as always, just win, baby.